Hello and welcome to my new channel. I'm Robin and today I want to show you how to make this beautiful seamless loop star animation. And um, yeah, here we go. Let's get started. Okay, so as you can see, I'm working with Blender 2.92. And for now we can just delete the default cube. I will just activate this and delete the lightning setup. We don't need any lightning for now. The camera, just put it right in the middle and rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis and zero degrees on the y and the, and the z-axis. So let's go through some render property settings. We will render an EV, which is good for the performance. Um, we can tweak the settings later. Just activate Bloom for now. This is fine. And go to the output settings. Um, just copy the resolution here. This is good resolution for, for uploading. And a very common one too. And this is very important. Um, the end frame in our scene will be 500. The start frame will be zero. And the frame rate we will put on 30. All right. So first of all, I will put a UV sphere into the scene. Um, the resolution is fine. Just drag it a little bit to the side. This will be our star. Just type in star. Okay. And now we will now we will need a cube again. And um, this will be our frame, our uh, emitter for all the stars. I already tried out some settings, um, but first of all, we want the origin to be right at the border here. So I will just go into edit mode and drag it down with control. Here we go. This is good. And just, I tried out that 40 on the X scale, Y is 10. And Z is 40 again, works fine. And just apply, oops, hello. just apply the scale. Okay, it's easier for us if you work into wireframe mode now. And now we can go on with the um, particle system. So we want the star to be into this um, frame here. So all we have to do is go to particle um, properties, make a new particle system. And um, we can crank up the number to 10,000. This is good. I tried it out. And um, we don't want to work with emitter. We want to work with hair. This looks ridiculous now. <laughs> um, so we want to change the source, first of all. So it doesn't emit from the faces, but from the volume, which means also within. And um, go to render, render as object and now we can uh, now we can uh, take our star and as you can see this already looks not like a sky but um, yeah we, we, we will get there we will get there no worries you can already put the random scale randomness on 0.8 this means that not all the stars will be the same size so now we can start with the real trick which is the animation and for this we have to go to the animation tab and um, press numpad 7, zoom in a little bit and you can see the camera is facing towards this direction and we want the stars to fly into the camera which means if the frame is moving um, we want we can now see the frame in, a, in its last position so we go here to the dope sheet um, go to the very end Press E, insert keyframe only for the location, and um, yes, this is the last location. Now we go to the very first frame, and I already calculated this. We have to move all of this just 100 meters in the Y direction. Press E again for location, and um, just in case you don't see the just in case you don't see the bar over here um, in the graph editor, just press on your numpad um, position and now you should see it. And um, you can see a bezier curve here. We don't want to have a bezier curve because if you start the animation, you can see it starts slowly and gets faster. That's not what we want. We want it to be steady and therefore 
um, just press T, interpolation set to linear, and now it moves constantly, which is exactly what we want. Perfect. Um, because we will now copy this five times and always shift the keyframes to a different position um, in the timing, we want this to be um, a circle animation, or I don't know how you call it. Like, I just put um, um, a cycles modifier for this curve, so we have to go here. Y location. If you don't see this bar, just press N. Add modifier, add cycles modifier. Now you can see that it always repeats. As I already said, this doesn't really matter for this one, but now we will copy this. Um, Shift D. You can just press escape for now. And you take both keyframes and move them 100 frames negative. Just be careful that you really hit the 100 and not more or less because otherwise there will be a gap which isn't that bad in that case but it's just it's better if it's really smooth. Okay do this again um, four times okay so now you can see that we have a beautiful moving animation loop and because we put the cycles modifier in here you can see that it always jumps back to the first position and slowly moves towards the camera. If I now press zero for camera review you can see all those oh, <laughs> all those stars um, are, are flying towards the camera. Okay so now if you go to render view mode you can see not much and um, there's a reason for it which is there's no lightning in the scene right now so um, first of all we have to go to shading and um, yeah just go into wireframe mode here type on the star add a new material delete the principal bcf and put in an emission shader okay just drag the emission into the surface and um, before the emission shader we will put a color ramp just go to convert converter color ramp and put the color into the emission so actually you don't have to do this if you say I just want the stars to be white it's fine or maybe some other color but I like to make some different colors for the stars so um, and this is a very simple trick which is really lovely just Put the color ramp into the color at another um, point and now you can just like twist tweak the colors a little bit so all the stars will look a little bit differently which I like but as I already said you don't have to do this um, just type in object info and put the random object info into the factor output so every star is calculated somewhere in this uh, spectrum of colors beautiful so uh, maybe you can make the strength a little bit bit higher i will put it on five and the star is definitely a little bit too big so i will make it smaller and as you can see because in the renders uh, in the particle settings you have um where is it where is it yeah, here, on a render object, object scale, which means when I scale the object, all the objects into the particle system will scale too. Yeah, now it might work already. Yeah, this already looks nice. I like that. Um, I just saw that I forgot to um, sh not show the emitter. Maybe if you have the setting activated, you have to go through all the object, uh, through all the particles, particle um, um, emitters, and deselect the show emitter. Okay, so now just press F12 to have a quick view how it looks, and this looks no, not really that good, but we are getting there. So you can see the stars are really too big. This is one thing, 
And the other thing is, um, you can see there's like a repeating pattern. I don't know why Blender is doing this, because um, it is set to random, but you can easily help yourself um, when you go back to animation. If you just like rotate some of the boxes. Um, yeah, rotate them along the y-axis. Okay. Yeah, work. Okay. And now again, let's make this star a little bit smaller. Um, press F12 again. Yeah, this is much, much better. This is much, much better. Maybe still a little too big, though. Um, yeah, to work. Another try. Yeah, I like that. I really like that. Um, now we just have one problem because whenever one box is jumping to the back, you have um, you see it in the animation, which means suddenly the stars will appear in the back, and this just looks weird. So we will put um, a volume, and for this, just put a cube. And make it bigger, well, maybe like this. So all the other cubes are set within this cube. Don't overdo it because it needs a lot of processing power. Okay, now go to the shading again and um, new material for this cube. We don't want a principal BSD, a BSDF again. This time we want a volume BSDF. Um, oh no, principal volume is it called? Is it's called? Drag it in here. It's, the density is much too high. You wouldn't see anything now. Point one should work, and give it maybe a little purple tweak. Don't overdo it, but um, yeah, just try around a little bit. Okay, don't forget to save by the way. Control S and um, yeah, here we go. Let's render it again. And I think this already looks awesome, right? Now it's not moving, obviously. And um, yeah, we will make it move in a second. But one thing is still st uh, still not perfect. You can still see there's like pairs of stars everywhere. So there's like um, one block still perfectly aligned with another one. And I don't really see which one is it, but I would just rotate it even, even more. They are all more or less the same. That should work. So yes, you can see this is a little bit trial and error. Um, yeah, this is a beautiful sky. Okay, so the next thing we want to add is some motion blur before we render it out. And um, for this, we have to go to the render properties, just activate the motion blur. Yeah, the default settings are quite good. And um, yeah, just hit F12 again, just for quick check. And you can see those beautiful stretches here, which gives you the impression that the, scar, uh, that the, that the stars are actually moving. And um, yeah, this effect is really, really nice. It adds a lot to the scene overall. And now um, we can already render out this version. You will see um, in the animation it looks really nice. The picture itself is not so interesting. And um, yeah, so just go for the dimension settings again, check them out. Um, really important and, and uh, start an end frame, but it should be all correct. Decide where you want to put the pictures. I made a folder here. I would just put them all in the folder. And um, you don't need RGBA. RGB is fine for now. Or color depth of 8 is fine too. Compression is good too. Um, yeah, so now just press Control F12 and lean back. And we see you in a second. Okay, so now the that the rendering is done, 
I always like to save the file and just go into a new document, a new Blender video editing. Um, obviously you have to save it before. And here you can just add image sequence, go to your path, um, go to your path and press A to select all, add image strip. Now just be careful that you have the same resolution settings and um, the same length. In our case it was 0 to 500 and we wanted it we want it to be in 30 frames per second. This is nice and uh, okay now you should go to FF MPEG video um, uh, encoding quick time. To be honest I really don't have much idea what I'm doing. It's just uh, the settings that everybody is using more or less or people recommend to use. And um, yeah, now you have to say where you want to put it again. I would just put it here. This is fine. I call it Starry Sky. And now press Ctrl F12 again. You can see this is really quick. So this is our final result. I think it looks really beautiful. It's an infinite loop. So this means you can watch it all day. Um, if you want to add some nebula fog in the background, go ahead and watch the next video. I will put the link in the description. Anyways, thank you so much for watching my first YouTube video ever and uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.